And and you indicated the reason that you re-recorded it was you were never satisfied with the vocals on the original. I, you know, I know the original. I love the vocals in the original. Not really. I don't. I don't really. It's my, not my, um, uh, no. Uh, I mean, I'm a guitar player. Good singing and all that stuff. So, I mean, you had to do in order to get gigs when you were younger. So, I mean, I'm really a guitar player. Uh, so, I just taught myself to sing and write and do the rest of it. But essentially, I'm I am a guitar player. So, singing-wise, no. I really wasn't... Um, it never, I was never really happy with it. Um, and the songs are great, and there's some good stuff, and there's some cool stuff on that beginning album. Um, uh, the songs just are strong. They, they, I mean, they just hold up, <clears throat> you know, even now, because I write pretty much tend to write timeless themes. Yeah, they're great songs. So the themes of the songs are pretty much timeless. Um, how they sound, how they're produced audio wise is. You know, you can, <laughs> you can, you know, you, what, you know, whatever the flavor of the month is, you could do it that way. <laughs> it's a lot. Of, you can interpret the songs any way you want. Um, a lot of my songs, I mean, uh, so the songs hold up and doing the album again was really, it was not just that. It was really just a, um, I was really doing it for my own amusement, frankly. And a lot of the stuff on there like Sad and Deep As You, uh, which to me is so much, one, well, there's a couple of things in there that to me are better, a lot better than the originals, like Sad and Deep As You. Uh, but that's a track that I cut, um, I mean, that's 10, 15 years ago that I cut that track. It's live, it's live from an XM radio show. Oh wow! So some of these albums were, uh, some of the tracks were cut at various times, and yeah, I've been I've been piddling around with this for ten to fifteen years, <laughs> so, um, and World in Changes um, was the new my new the new arrangement of it, which personally I really like, and that just was something that was taking one of my songs and. Um, you know, re just pick, coming up with some different way to do it. Um, and reggae's always been a big part. I'm English. You know, we have, you have, there's a large Jamaican population in England, always has been. So reggae music has been, has always been part of my sort of background. So floating into that groove is was just easy. Um, but the song holds up, but it's world in changes. I mean, that song's about as current as you could possibly get. <laughs> Talk to me a little about the Alone Together sessions and what you remember about those times. You know, I came here, I was 22 years of age when I cut that album. And uh, I didn't know anybody here. So uh, uh, Tommy LaPuma, who co-produced the album, sort of, you know, they brought the musicians in who were just all great musicians in LA at the time. Um, but if I'd have had that band on the road for about a month before going in and actually cutting that record, I probably would not be redoing it now, actually. Yeah, I mean, you, the, the, the players. It would, have, it would have a little more energy to it. It'd have a little more, guys would know it. They'd be just, They'd be playing it and not thinking about it while they're doing it, you know, because you're in a studio. Just Here's the song, guys, you know, go ahead, play. Let me hear what you're going to do to it. I mean, you, you've got, you know, maybe a few hours to interpret a song rather than being out there on the road and let them just play it, you know. So for that reason, this redo um, has a lot of that in it because they're all, they're all, they're all except for World in Changes, they're all cut live, those tracks. They're in the studio, but I'm playing, everything's being played live. It's right there and there. You're so talking the, the, orig the original you're, you're talking about? Or the new, the new version? The new, the re-record of Alone Together. Okay. It's all cut live from my, you know, the most of my live band. So everything's live in the studio. There's no overdubs. Only overdubs in my vocal after cutting everything. So they have a, 
they have a live energy to them, which which the original didn't have. They're great and they're good and the songs are cool, but this just has a little more mm, in there. Yeah, I, I, that's a, probably how I would describe it as well. And the, the original album, which I feel is a masterpiece, it has that laid back Laurel Canyon vibe to it. The new has a lot of punch to it. The band is up front. It is a more rockin' album. It's, uh, it definitely has uh, a more in your face, uh, I'll say punch to it. And, um, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's they're because they're live. They, they've been played, you know, so they have that energy. Which, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, man. And you know, you you alluded to the you know the players you had on the record, and it's like a, a mythological group of musicians, obviously whom you've had you had relationship before. Oh, the oh the original alone together, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were all. I mean, I kind of knew. Um, I mean, I knew Carl Radel, and I knew um, a couple of the guys from Delaney and Bonnie. Because uh, I knew Delaney and Bonnie band, and so I knew Reader a little bit, and also I was knew Leon a little because um, he had a band at the time. He had his own album going. I think he had a band called the Asylum Choir. Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean it was a great group of guys. Great drum. I mean two great drummers, Jim Cowton and Jim Gordon. Um, and uh, like I said, I mean I was. <laughs> they were all pulled in by uh, by Tommy LaPuma, who co-produced it with me. So yeah, it was great. Great players. Oh, a, lot of t a lot of guys from, a lot of players from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. 